Garage Time. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Garage Time. This week, I'm gonna do my best to finish welding in that patch for the driver's side fender and just finish that fender off altogether. So let's get right into it. You know, this once again is not trimmed as it should be, but just to give you an idea, the curvature here looks okay. So this will have to get trimmed and this gap will get closed up. But uh, it needs just a tiny bit more work um, with uh, just a hammer and dolly. And then I'm going to cut this flange off and start welding it on. Okay, one last thing. If you remember, I made a template of my, my bumper. This is the side profile of the RS bumper. So I just wanna make sure that we can get these to roughly line up, somewhere like that. So before I cut it and trim it, I need to make sure that this isn't gonna be you know, misaligned once it's all said and done. Okay, here's another homemade tool that is invaluable. I'm gonna use this one for taking out those hammer marks in that flange. And it's really just a flat piece of sheet metal with a uh, rod, a solid bar, a round bar welded on top. There's a little bit of curvature. So what I do is I, I put this in my vise. Okay, now there's essentially no more hammer marks. This, this part is done. Okay, so what I plan to do now is get ready to weld this piece onto the fender. So I'm going to mark this edge. I'm gonna make a two inch line above this edge. So after I cut it off, I still have reference as to where this straight line belongs. Just like keying a Porsche. Okay, so I have this uh, trimmed and clamped kind of in one place. Um, I formed the flange going here into the turn signal, but I haven't formed the bottom flange where the fender or the bumper will bolt onto. Um, I, I typically do those last. So once I weld it, all the distortions out, then I'll, I'll form that last flange. So there's the gap. It's not, not very well clamped. I need to close the gap just a little bit. And then the clearance to the turn signal is probably, I don't know, eighth of an inch or maybe slightly less. I have a little cardboard shim in here to account for some paint. This housing is just about where it's gonna be. So I think it's time to tack it in. 
I'm gonna show you, I also have this, um, this old saw blade, this is a band saw blade, and, and it's hard to do holding the camera, but what I like to do is, is, is use this to, to see if the curve is, is even. So I'm gonna double check this one more time once it's tacked in place, but this is another cheap tool, easy trick to, uh, you know, make sure that there's no lumps or edges in this, in this uh, wheel well. I've also have my original templates here. This was one of the templates I used to, to create this. So there's those lines. Seems to follow the template okay. And then also I have, this is the bumper template. This is the profile of the bumper, the uh, RS aftermarket uh, fiberglass bumper. So it has a gasket that goes about there, but that should line up okay. So we're looking at the whole wheel arch down to the bottom. This line's parallel with the turn signal. So I think I've done just about as much measuring I can do. So it's time to weld it in. Okay, so before I can weld on here, I gotta clean, clean the backside. So there's some leftover undercoating and just a little bit of surface rust where, you know, this used to be bent up. So this is a place where water can catch, a place to look out for. So I'm just gonna use, you know, my uh, angle grinder with a wire wheel. So now we have some nice clean uh, metal to weld to. There is a little bit of rust pitting uh, right, right here. The wire wheel does a pretty good job of cleaning out those pits. Well, I have this thing tacked in place. Um, you know, one right there, tiny little one in the middle, one over here. So you can kind of get an idea of how the gap looks. And it's in a pretty good place. Things are starting to line up. So we have this uh, tacked in place in, you know, several places. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, kind of eight places. It's, uh, it's not going to move. All the seams are uh, smooth and the curvature looks good. So I'm going to put this, this time I'm using a, a, a ruler. Curves even. It's flat. So I'm um, satisfied with its position. So now it's time to complete that seam weld. So I've just done a, a short weld up here. This is uh, still cooling down. This weld here is a little over an inch long. This is about uh, one inch. And it's, I'm gonna let it cool down. Probably do a little hammer and dolly while it's cooling down. And uh, underneath here, I have this supported by a uh, you know cheap jack. And underneath that jack is a piece of copper. Uh, similar to this. Um, the copper isn't there so much to remove the heat. I mean, it does remove some heat, but it's also there to prevent the, uh, the shielding gas from, um, it keeps the shielding gas underneath the weld so it doesn't get contaminated from the backside. Yay, this is done. Um, welded all the way along the seam. Uh, no grinding yet, just uh, a little bit of hammering, uh, really keeping the distortion flat throughout the entire part. But we have uh, you know good alignment here to the fender edge. 
So all the way down. This seems like it matches pretty well just by just by feel. So if you remember, this was the, the deeper section and then it, it tailors uh, or tapers down to almost nothing right there. So we preserve the fender arch all the way across. It feels pretty flat. You can check it with my, my ruler. So across across the weld, you know, there's still 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 grinding to do, but this looks like it's going to be okay. So so very little grinding to do, and we should be ready to tie in the corner and tie it in down here. Here's the back side. So I just lightly ground just a few places where the weld came too far through. But um, it's welded all the way solid with no holes or... Oftentimes I'll put a big bright light up. You know, you see a big bright light there. So. It's difficult to see reflections on unpainted steel, but if the light is right, you can you can see how the metal reflects. A little hard to pick up on camera, but to my eye, I can tell that the distortions are are largely uh, gone. I've done some hammering on this, so it's it's pretty well done. Um, still have to you know trim the flange, tie it in, and all that. But the the difficult part, which is this outer weld is complete. So I just need to mark uh, where this is gonna get um, bent. So it looks like I have just barely enough material to bend this over. Uh, I really I really should have made this part wider. Uh, I don't know what I was thinking. I guess it was just easier to hammer a smaller piece, but once I, once I bend this, it's gonna need some material. So I don't know, if I have to add to it, I can, but I really should have made that just a quarter inch longer or wider as I should say. So time to uh, put the camera down, mark mark this carefully, and then uh, reference this line up here. So this line was based on the original shape. So these are no longer are parallel. So I'm going to start here, make these lines parallel all the way to the back and then bend it along that new line. Here's the, <clears throat> the flange or the bottom of the fender, you know, that lip, which has been moved from here down to here has been re reshaped. And there's a couple, a uh, couple pie cuts here, which I'm gonna weld up right now. And then uh, reattach this to here. So we have a complete box for the uh, housing. So I just welded in these uh, pie cuts to cap off this lip with the wheel arch and joined, um, quickly joined this to here. There's a bracket that goes across here like a gusset also is a attachment point for the turn signal housing. And I'm just working on now this, um, this curvature. So that matches the curvature of the signal lens. And I had to cut it to make the curve and now I'm left with a big hole which is kind of bad planning. I, I really should have made a probably a cardboard template, but you know, these curved pieces are hard to form anyways. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to just try to fill that up with weld or if I'm going to uh, cut a bigger hole and splice a piece in. I might just get the big welder and just fill it up, which, you know, I typically don't like to do, but 
Okay, here's the housing in the corner there. So it's, you know, it's not perfect, but it's roughly in the right shape. So this is starting to line up okay. You know, still some fine tuning here. There's a pretty large gasket that goes between here and the bumper, so um, I might be making this too hard on myself. But I am trying to, you know, line it up the best best we can. The fine tuning, especially here on the front, I'm going to uh, hold off until we get the fender mounted, bumper mounted, as I said before, because there's a, a fair amount of alignment to do to get all these parts to be in the same orientation. Well, the hole's gone. Um, it's a little messy. I just wire brushed that real quick to get all the residue off, but I'm going to grind that down. There's probably a few pinholes in there. I can just fill up the pinholes with the TIG welder, but uh, this was quick and easy way to get that hole fixed. The curve, the curve there looks okay, so um, I need to look at some pictures once again, decide how this corner is supposed to look, because I don't think it's supposed to have that square cut right there. You can see the pinhole right there. There's at least one big one and um, probably two small ones. So I'm just gonna go over this whole thing with the, with the other welder, the TIG welder and seal those up so there's no corrosion or any uh, contamination there on the backside. So now you can see this corner is pretty well done. Um, just a little light grinding to do, but here's where I just welded right over the top of that, that MIG weld. And you know, it's not recommended. It was definitely crackling and popping and sizzling. So the last piece is this corner part it goes uh, right here. There's no hole drilled yet, but this is the attachment point for the housing. But before I can put this part in, I need to continue this bead all the way down to the bottom. Okay, so here is the, the back side of the fender. And this is the piece that I'm gonna weld in right now. It's uh, it's way bigger than it needs to be. Remember, I'm just trying to carry this, this flange around um, and I'm gonna be welding along this corner here. This is bigger uh, only because I'm just gonna use it sort of as a heat sink. You know, it helps with the welding. This has been finished. Um, the whole seam in the corner there has been welded on the back side. So here's the front side. And, uh, you know, none of this is really visible, um, but it's, I'm showing it to you anyways. This just needs to be trimmed. I'm gonna mark that, oh, it's still kind of hot. Um, I'm gonna mark this and um, just grind the, that weld just a, a little bit. Uh, that's the backside penetration, so it's not as pretty as the front side. So this piece needs to go just about here and it's going to get welded to the, the new piece that's just put in. This is, um, you know, much too tall, but uh, once again, I like to weld things first and then trim later. Okay, so now that all the bracketry is in place, it's time to uh, mark the holes where the housing can be mounted. Ta-da! This is mounted um, all the way. Everything is screwed in place and it is 
in its kind of rough alignment. I'm going to have to add some material here because I really shouldn't have cut this as short as I did. So by no means is this a completely authentic conversion, but I don't care because I'm not trying to create a, a direct RS copy. I'm just trying to make it turn into a long hood. So one last shot of the bracketry that was added and you know this is the picture that i went by i, I could have done you know this would have been a lot easier if i hadn't had an actual uh 69 to 73 fender but once again this is just nitpicking you know do i really care no this is really a car to be you know ha have a hot rod and make it make it fun to drive and i definitely am not going to be thinking about this after today so i want to thank you for watching this video I know it's tedious and very detailed, but I just wanted to show what is involved in doing this conversion.